Here is everything you need to know about BMAT Section 2 Chemistry from a Cambridge student who scored an 8.6 in Section 2. So BMAT Section 2 Chemistry consists of 7 questions in 7 minutes. That is 1 minute per question. However, timing can be a real issue because of the calculations. A lot of the time these can take a lot longer than 1 minute and out of 7 questions about 4 of them are calculations. The other three questions are generally knowledge from the BMAT Section 2 Assume Knowledge Guide, but one thing I've noticed is that they seem to really love electrolysis, so I'll definitely revise this topic specifically. Now, in terms of my tips for doing well on BMAT Section 2 Chemistry, my first tip is learning the formulae through their principles and concepts instead of learning the formula triangles that you use at GCSE. The reason is this first of all makes it a lot easier to deal with and second of all avoids you ma getting muddled up when you're trying to rearrange formula in less than one minute. So I'll give you an example. The formula that number of moles is equal to mass divided by MR can instead be thought of as the fact that one mole is an amount. It's a certain number of particles of a material. One mole of each material is going to have a standard weight. For instance, one mole of carbon atoms has a weight of 12 grams. Therefore, whatever weight you're given in the question, you're comparing to that standard of one mole. So if you have 3 grams, 3 is a quarter of 12, so you have 0 0.25 moles of carbon. Another similar example and way of thinking about this is concentration is equal to the number of moles divided by volume, hence the units of concentration are moles per decimeter cubed. And this is a much better way of thinking about the formulae as opposed to just remembering the formula triangle because it's a lot more intuitive and it avoids you making silly errors. Another thing I'm going to touch on quickly as part of this is units are really important in BMAT section 2. A lot of times the question will give you units that are designed to trip you up, especially with regards to volumes. So with all the formula, you want to use volumes in decimeters cubed, but the questions are going to give you quantities in centimeters cubed. All you need to remember is that one decimeter cubed is a thousand centimeters cubed. I go in a lot more detail about how to do chemistry calculations, as well as section one and section two in the Sigma Med BMAT course. You can check it out at sigmamed.co.uk. Me and my friend Hamza have created an online BMAT video course in our opinion is the only paid resource you need, costing just £30. We're also adding the 2022 Section 1 and Section 2 full walkthroughs to the course. So honestly, it is really worth it if you're preparing for the BMAT this year. My second tip for acing BMAT Section 2 Chemistry is working in fractions as much as possible, similar to the advice I gave for math. Again, what you want to look for is you want to look for powers of 10 and powers of 2 differences between the numerator and denominator of the fraction. With BMAT Chemistry, the numbers are always going to be nice if you follow this method. And if you're doing long division, you've probably gone wrong somewhere. So working in fractions can allow you to spot Spot these things really easily and in my opinion this is the main key to doing really well in BMAT section 2 chemistry calculation questions. A quick example is if you have 0.17 grams of something and its MR is 34 grams, 17 is half of 34 and 0.34 is 1 a hundredth of 34 so therefore the fraction 0 0.17 over 34 is going to become 1 over 200 by noticing the fact that 17 is half of 34. If you're not working in fractions, you'd be trying to do 0 0.17 divided by 34 by long division, which sounds like an absolute nightmare to me. So my next tip is going to be about balancing equation style questions. In most BMAP papers I've looked at, there's usually one of these. And in my opinion, if you can't get it within about 10 seconds, I would guess it and come back to it if you have time at the end. Because these can be really time consuming. So I'm going to give you guys my method to doing these questions that I think is a bit quicker. What I like to do is I like to look for what I call a limiting factor term. This is a term that doesn't have a mole number behind it and then I use that to find the other mole numbers and from there I create a balance table for each atom and then it's just a case of trial and error. That's my general method for balancing equation type questions but again I'd only do this if you have time at the end because there's usually only one of these and it, they can be extremely time consuming. My next tip for doing well at BMAX Section 2 Chemistry is reading the answer options and using them as a guide to estimate. So usually with BMAX Section 2 Chemistry, the answer options aren't going to be insanely close together, they're pretty far apart, and they're kind of designed to trip you up if you made a massive error, like a power of 10 error or something. So for example, if you were doing the calculation 10 subtract 2 point something, you instantly know that 
the answer option that's a bit bigger than 7 is probably going to be the right answer if there's no other answer options close to it. This is going to save you doing unnecessary calculations and just on the whole make your life so much easier. Now I'm going to teach you guys my 3 step method to solving any BMAT section 2 chemistry calculation. Step number 1 is reading the question, answer and reading the question again. This makes sure you know what quantities you're working with what ballpark you're working with, and any units you need to convert. Step number two is converting any masses to moles as you can only use the ratios and chemistry calculations in moles, they don't work in grams. And then step number three is using the units in the question to figure out which formula you're going to need and remembering to incorporate my first tip, which is using the formula based on their principles as opposed to just simply remembering formula triangles. Now I'm going to show you guys a worked example with these tips in action. If you want more worked examples, check out sigmamed.co.uk because me and my friend Hamza have put tons of worked examples for not just section 2, but also sections 1 and 3 of the BMAT. 4 grams of calcium hydroxide was added to 200 centimeters cubed of water at room temperature. The mixture was stirred until no more solid dissolved. 3.63 grams of calcium hydroxide was left undissolved. What is the solubility in moles per decimeter cubed of calcium hydroxide at room temperature? So, we started with 4 grams, we're left with 3.63 grams, meaning that 4 minus 3.63 is equal to 0 0.37 grams that did dissolve. So solubility is just going to be the grams that actually dissolved divided by the molar mass divided by the volume. So solubility is equal to moles over volume. In this case, the number of moles here, let's write that here, is going to be equal to 0 0.37 over the MR of calcium hydroxide. So remember, calcium hydroxide is Ca brackets OH2. So it's going to be 40 plus 2 times 17, which is 40 plus 34, which is 74. So the important thing to notice here is that 37 is half of 74. So in this case, it's not going to be half because it's off by a 2 pounds of 10. So it's going to be 1 over 200. And in terms of volume, 200 centimeters cubed is one fifth of a decimeter cubed. So that's simply going to be one over five dm cubed. So the solubility is going to be one over 200 divided by one over five, which is simply five over 200, which is going to be equal to 2.5 over 100, which is going to be equal to 0 0.25, 0 0.025 moles per decimeter cubed. So that's going to be answer option D for question number 26. So essentially what we've done there is we've, we've calculated the number of moles we have looking for the common factor of 2 and the power of 10 difference between numerator and denominator and then we've just used this formula as we have to. I hope you guys found this BMAT section to chemistry tutorial really useful. If you are applying to medicine or Oxford, just consider subscribing to my channel and check out sigmamed.co.uk if you're sitting the BMAT this year. Thank you for watching.